Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Dr. Vajay Shibir with another interesting video on ECG. This is the ECG which we are going to discuss today. This is ECG of a 25 year old boy who presented with acute onset syncope. The patient had a family history of sudden cardiac death with his father dying at age of 33 with sudden cardiac death. Before starting the discussion, as always, I would like you to pause your videos, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself, and at the end of the video, compare your findings and diagnosis with what was discussed in this video. So let's begin the discussion on this case. As you know, the first thing which we look at on an ECG is rhythm. For rhythm, we will look at lead 2. As we can see that there are upright and prominent P waves before each QRS complex. So whenever you find an upright and prominent P wave before a QRS complex in lead 2, it means that the rhythm is sinus. Next step on an ECG interpretation is calculation of heart rate. For this, we will select a QRS complex which lies on broad vertical line. And between this QRS complex and next QRS complex, the large boxes are counted as 375. So in this case, the heart rate is about 75 beats per minute. Now the next step is determination of axis. For axis, we look at the direction of QRS complex in lead 1 and lead AVF. Here in lead 1, you can see that the QRS complex is negative. While the QRS complex is positive in lead AVF. So by the rule of thumb, a negative QRS complex in lead 1 and a positive QRS complex in lead AVF means that this is our right axis deviation. Now moving on to the duration of PR interval. You can see that the PR interval is within normal limit. It is less than one large scale or 200 milliseconds. Similarly, now next is QRS complex. As you can see, the QRS complex appears narrow in limb leads. It is less than 100 milliseconds. However, in v1 v2 and v3 you can find that the qrs complex is a bit broadened the qrs complex is around 110 millisecond in these leads also you can find a prominent r wave in lead v1 normally there is no r wave in lead V1. Also, another important finding is presence of T wave inversions in lead V1 to lead V5, along with T wave inversions in lead 2, 3, and AVF. Another very important finding in this ECG is presence of this prominence after QRS complex in lead V1. You can find a small hump after QRS complex in lead V1. Similarly, you can also find this prominence or hump in lead V2. This hump or this prominence in lead V1 is called epsilon wave. 
Also, another important finding is the delayed upslurring of S wave in lead V1. Uh, the upslurring means that the terminal portion of S wave in lead V1 is wide. So whenever you find presence of right axis deviation, presence of partial right bundle branch block as evident by presence of R wave and borderline broad QRS complexes along with T wave inversions in anterior chest leads that is V1, V2, and V3. Plus, when there is an hump after QRS complex that is epsilon wave in young patients, you must suspect the presence of arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, also known as ARVC, is the second most common cause of sudden cardiac death in patients who are less than 35 years of age. It is basically an autosomal dominant condition which results in fibro fatty infiltration of right ventricle. The presentation in patients with ARVC is variable. Some patients may complain of palpitations, there may be history of syncope, or even the patient, the first presentation in patients with ARVC could be a sudden cardiac death. The patients who survive these arrhythmias over a long period of time develop right ventricular failure. The main ECG findings in a patient with ARVC include the main ECG findings in a patient with ARVC include the T wave inversions in anterior chest leads that is V1, V2, and V3. There is prolongation, localized prolongation of QRS complex in lead V1, V2, and V3, V3 with a duration of around 10 milliseconds. Also, in these leads, there is prolonged upstroke of S wave with which is more than 55 milliseconds. The most specific sign of ARVC on an ECG is an epsilon wave. Epsilon wave is present in about 30% of the patients. Here is the magnified view of an epsilon wave in lead V1. You can see that there is a prominent hump after QRS complex in lead V1. As I mentioned that this is the most specific sign of ARVC on an ECG. If we have a strong suspicion of ARVC in a patient and we do not find epsilon wave in lead V1, V2, or V3, then we can use Fontaine leads, which are basically the modification of normal lead 1, 2, and lead 3. In case of Fontaine leads, we, we place the right arm electrode over the manubrium, while the left arm electrode is placed over the Z-fight process, and the left leg electrode is placed in fifth intercostal space mid-clavicular line. In this way, Fontaine 1, 2, and 3 leads are formed which record the activity over the right ventricle. So placement of these leads will make the epsilon wave prominence if it is present in case of ARVC. ARVC is a basically highly arrhythmogenic condition and it may result in sudden cardiac death and the treatment is placement of ICD to prevent ventricular arrhythmia and sudden cardiac death. This is all for today. 
hopefully you like the video for more videos kindly subscribe to our channel and stay tuned allah hafiz and take care till next time